Hello Battle Union fans and welcome one and all to the Union News Weekly Recap Power Rankings Combo Video for Week 2 of the Battle Union Season 3. Uh, a few points of admin before we get into the meat of the video. Firstly, apologies for the delay to this one. I'm aware this is going up a little bit later than perhaps we would have liked. You know, myself and Chaos, we've been a little bit busy ourselves. Um, so things got a little bit on top of us, uh, so it's coming down to now to do the recording. Secondly, speaking of my man Chaos in the Sky, you will notice that he is being uncharacteristically quiet right about now, and that is because he in fact not here. Um, he, as he said, he's been incredibly busy and he's unable to make it this week, which is unfortunate, but... I am going to be flying it solo this time, and the new format that we've introduced to this video is probably going to help out with that with one cohesive list and just going through the games. <clears throat> so, without further ado, let's get right into those games and see how things played out in week 2 of the Battle Union. So, first up, we had the St. Louis Chatots versus A.S. Monferno. Very big game there, um, the St. Louis Chatots, they are Sinister Sableyes team. And of course, AS Monferno is Alex Wanzi Baynet. Now, this resulted in a 4 0 victory for AS Monferno. Um, looking at some of the team building decisions, Alex going with a really nice uh, lead guard chomp set, red card with raw and rocks. You know, this was always going to be his lead. He said that he wants to get rocks up as soon as possible, pressure the spinners on, um, on Sinister Sableye's side, raw things around, get a red card off net when, whenever he can. And, you know, rack up that um, that residual damage. Now, he did say that his only rapid spin that he could bring was Sand Slash. Not entirely true, because, of course, he does have that Starmie, but it didn't come into play, so all is well. Nice Meloetta set as well. It's very easy to bring a sort of bulky, offensive Assault Vest set. It's the set it really likes to run. But Alex has gone with a physically defensive uh, set, Special Bias on the offensive side, with U-Turn as well. So, uh, <clears throat> nice build there. On, uh, on Baby Eye's side, good Starmie build. He's brought an Expert Belt set here. And I really like to scrutinise Expert Belt sets just to see how many mons that Expert Belt is going to um, to hit and affect for Starmie's damage output. And that was all except two on Alex's squad, so good decision. Um, Yarchi Sand Slash is nice, Power Up Punch Gramble is cool. And good to see both of them really looking into speed tiers. Um, we know that people like to sort of... Uh, get the optimum speed tier, but they both have a 115 speed offensive mon, Starmie and Sneasel, both going max to speed tie. So in the battle, it was all safe plays to begin with, um, then Sinister Baby Eye, he gets a little bit sort of um, risky with some of his plays. You know, he said he didn't want Gramble to take a T-Wave, and he then switches Scarfed Heatran in to take that, which is a bit questionable, and then he switches Gramble in to take a Scald, it's AV, but it risks the burn, which thankfully wasn't forthcoming. Alex does well to keep rocks up, you know. Um, that was part of his plan, and he shows Baby Eye he's not afraid to predict Sand Slash coming in for Starmie on the Lantern to absorb a an electric type attack and get a spin off. Um, Baby Eye was again he was reckless with Haxorus, but he knows that. He said in his video he knew he was too reckless with it. And Alex, you know, he has two big win conditions as the game progresses. He's got a defensive win condition in Lantern and an offensive win condition in Sneasel, and he maintains them very well indeed to allow himself to take the 4-0 victory in this game. So, with that game out of the way, let's move on really quickly. <coughs> Excuse me, bit of a cough. Uh, to the second game of the week that saw Jedi and the Western Weezings taking on Trip and the Dallas Staravias. Big game for Jedi. Trip, he's looking, of course, to uh, defend his title from last season. Uh, Jedi bringing Power Herb, Sky Attack, Aerodactyl. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, really cool set. Uh, no double slap jinx still. Jedi, I'm disappointed. Still no double slap jinx. Where is it? When are we going to see it? Answers in the comment section. When do you think we're going to see Double Slap Jinx? Um, but he does speed creep the Megalophony with the Scarf, which is very nice. Good building on his part. Trip. Team building video for Trip. That intro. Don't think I didn't see it, Trip. And don't think I'm not going to make notes on it, because I am. And I'd like to see you do that every single week. <laughs> um, now, first thing to say about Trip. He is, of course, a champion. And Jedi has not had the greatest of luck in the format. But Trip does not underestimate Jedi. You know, he spends a lot of time talking about how he's not going to underestimate Jedi. 
uh, seen as sort of one of the more gimmicky players. <clears throat> but he's not going to underestimate him. He's going to take every battle as serious as he can, which is a good attitude to take. Um, a disgusting Umbreon, which of course most Umbreons are. And a fairly cool Mew set. You know, it's bulky. It's bulky Mew. Um, but it's got enough investment to take out specific threats on both sides <clears throat> and heal up. So a nice build there. What I liked about both of these guys when we come to this battle, um, they've built really well by taking into account what their opponent has and what their opponent doesn't have. <clears throat> so, for example, Jedi, he sees no dragon immunity. Trip's got Togetic on the bench, Jedi sees no dragon immunity, so he's happy to run mono Dragon Pulse on a bulkier Latias build. On the other side, Trip sees no steel types on his opponent's side, so he can go full Toxic Store with Umbreon. So good building and good scouting of the opponent's squads there. It's sometimes easy to overlook things when you're trying to build for this format. Now, looking at the battle, um, <clears throat> Jedi, it has to be said, he doesn't use Latias as well as I think he would have liked. You know, he takes a Toxic and he starts keep setting up Calm Minds when he knows it wasn't really going to work. Now, I know that feel, bro. I do. Uh, I, you are talking to, in me, a fellow dubious user of Latias, I think we'd say. <laughs> um, you know, these things happen. I know he wanted to set up with it and it would have been nice, but for the Toxic... Not too much going on early game, um, but there were a few sort of big bulk wars going on, and Jedi wins the Aromatis versus Tangrowth mind games. Um, you know, he was consistently switching in his Aerodactyl hard on the Tangrowth a couple of times. Third time comes around, Tangrowth wants to go for Hidden Power Ice, Aromatis at low health stays in taking the risk, and is able to set up the wish on the overprediction. So nice play there, but <clears throat> on the flip side, he does completely waste his Mianxia, excuse me. <coughs> really got a frog in my throat. Yeah, on the flip side, Jedi does completely waste Mianxia on the gamble that Curum wasn't max special attack. Now, um, Trip, I believe, was running a mono Ice Beam Icicle Plate set with the max special attack. Um, which was a shame, because Mianxia could have put in a decent amount of work. What was also a shame was the Cincino, or Chinchino, or however you want to say it. Um, Jedi did get a sort of myth gen going on there. It was supposed to be skill link Chinchino, it was actually Technician, uh, which was unfortunate for him. It did still manage to get itself a KO, I believe. Um, so that was fun for it. <clears throat> what wasn't fun was Mew versus Aromatisse. Not a fun matchup to watch. <laughs> so um, that went on for a little while. Sky Attack Aerodactyl, unfortunately we didn't see it do any work, but uh, hopefully another day, because I did enjoy the set. Um, and of course, Jinx picking up two KOs. Really nice to see, you know, um, we saw in Season 1, Jedi was adamant that Mr. Mime was going to do well. It may not have done as, w as well as he would have wanted, but Jinx is now sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Um, So, yeah, a good start, I think, for Jinx. This game really showing what it could do. Ah, I had a sip of tea there to try and <clears throat> stop myself coughing too much. So, with that game out of the way, the 2 of victory for the Dallas Staravias, let's move on to the third game, another 2-0 victory in this one, and that saw Quill and Juventes taking on Slyro and the Pittsburgh Pyros, and Quill was the one taking the 2-0 victory this time for his side. <coughs> Quill's team building video, that's a face, we've seen Quill's face, hello Quill, good to see. Um, now, he did bring his sticky web Galvantula, I wasn't sure about this, looking at the, the, the sort of the team matchup, you know, Sly, on his side, he has multiple speed boosting methods in the form of Motor Drive, Unburden, and Rock Polish. He's got some priority with Arcanine and Amber Palm, and he has a Levitating Defogger, and the rest of his mons don't really care about, um, about Sticky Web. Quill also had Hazard Stack, but no Rapid Spin, um, which I think we went into when we looked over the teams at the beginning of the season. That's something that will be interesting to see if Quill is able to deal with. <coughs> On Sly's side, not too much to say. I like seeing Toxic on things like Ambipom. These sort of pretty powerful hitters, but they can be warred by certain types. I like seeing Toxic on that. You see it sometimes on the likes of Victini, when it's going up against, for example, an Arcanine. Um, or, you know, matchups of that ilk. You'll see it's coming really into vogue these days. People running Toxic on their big hitters, just to hit the one thing that can stop them. Excadrill um, completely sets up on uh, Sly's Porygon 2, unfortunately, only running uh, Tri-Attack and Thunderbolt for offense. But he does have the Lord Almighty Hidden Power Flying Venusaur to try and take on the Chestnut, who is, of course, immune to the Sludge Bomb. Now, looking at the battle, 
Um, fake out Amber Pom is seen coming an absolute mile away by Quill. Very good build on his part to pack protect on Galvantula. It works, uh, meaning that he is guaranteed to set up that sticky web, and he can scout out low kick with a following up um, protect, which is very nice. Um, Sly making the great prediction, hidden power flying on the switch into the chestnut to get big damage. Um, then it comes down to Medicham. Medicham behind a sub, that's super spooky. But um, as usual, Sly is lucky and bad. You know, we know this. Um, and nimbly dodges yet another high jump kick. Um, and that really, really put, um, put Quill on the back foot for a little while. You know, um, he's sitting behind a sub with Medicham. Things are looking great. Uh, but then he misses a high jump kick and suddenly everything's bad. He's got his own residual damage with Tyranitar and the uh, and the Sandstorm. And suddenly, um, Medicham can only get one kill before it's neutralized. Then Tyranitar comes in, sets up a Dragon Dance, and straight up murders Sly. Um, he gets about three kills with Dragon Dance Tyranitar, um, which was great to see. Uh, he gets uh, he gets unfortunate damage on the uh, on the Togekiss, um which was quite bad, you know, what we saw was Sly bringing in Arcanine uh, on the Tyranitar. Uh, close combat is super obvious, especially if he's Scarfed. He bluffs the Scarf, I think, quite well. Um, so in comes the Togekiss to try and absorb that, but Sly makes the play, just goes straight for that choice, banded Flare Blitz, and straight up Okos the Togekiss. But unfortunately, at that point, the damage was done, the sand was up, Excadrill was able to come in and just clean sweep up the rest of the game. Um... And, you know, Sly, he knows his um, his weaknesses in this game. There were two fairly big ones. He over-prepped for the, mega, for the, uh, for the Medicham, which was unnecessary because he should have known that he could just luck his way around it. Um, and he knows that he ought to have bought Defog, and I think that's something that was quite big in this game. You know, he sees Sticky Web, and maybe he wasn't expecting it, but he sees Chestnut uh, with the spikes, he sees potential rocks, you know, and he doesn't bring the Defog, which was a mistake on his part, but you live and learn. Um... Sly's a good player, and I doubt he'll make the same mistake twice when he comes up against potential hazard stack. So, a good win for Juventus there, 2-0 to Quill. So, fourth game, and that was going to see uh, Just Weevil, our friend Jack and the Wolverhampton Weevils, taking on Jim, Potato Jim, and the Meath Mamoswines. The third 2-0 so far, and that goes to Just Weevil, taking the 2-0 victory over the Meath Mamoswines. So, let's look at some team decisions. Just Weevil, it was fairly standard .jpg really, you know, you've got a fairly standard Mega Medicham, Black Gloss is Bishop, Defensive Landris Therian, um, and sometimes people don't particularly like fully Defensive Landris Therian, often seen in the format better used as a defensive-ish pivot, getting the Intimidate and you turning on around. But, you know, it's fine for his team, these things, they just do what they do. Um, Jim, you do look fabulous. You know it. He said that in his, um, in his, in his video. Um, he excellently predicted Jack's team, um, pretty much on the money for what he was going to bring. Scarfed healing with Shaman, that's always nice to see. I enjoyed the Zygarde set. What he was bringing was Coil with two physical attacks, Earthquake and um, Extreme Speed, and the Hidden Power Ice uh, to be able to hit the Landris Theorem, which otherwise would wall it. What I quite liked here is um, looking at their respective fire types. Just Weevil, he has Volcarona, and Jim has Rotom Heat. So, Volcarona was packing Hidden Power Water to be able to hit the Rotom Heat. And Rotom Heat was packing Hidden Power Rock and able to hit the Volcarona, which I really enjoyed. And in the battle, we saw this exact matchup turn 2, which was brilliant. Both fire types in on turn 2. They both go for their coverage Hidden Powers against each other, turn 2. Neither KOs, they both go down to red, but it was fun. Um, and uh, then we see some interesting stuff revolving around um, Jack's by Sharp, Latios gets the special defense drop on By Sharp, which you don't want because Defiant then kicks in. <laughs> and then it turns out that By Sharp has Black Sludge instead of Black Glasses, which was unfortunate. A little bit of a Jenning error going on there, I would imagine. Um, but a plus two By Sharp, it turns out, doesn't care about Colber Berries because Latios is just straight destroyed. Um, nice to see Mega Agron getting a K with Avalanche on the Landris Therian. Um, and whilst we saw a good rear guard action from Shaman, uh, it was just a little bit too little too late. What he did allow um, Shaman to do, and I'm really talking about Jack here, um, Jack could have had a much better differential. But 
he wanted to give the final KO of Shaman to um to his Mega Medicham, not realizing at the time that Shaman was scarfed, and Shaman just goes for the scarfed seed flare and does get the crit. So um Jim was able to bring it down to a somewhat fortunate 2-0. Jack, when you can, play safe. Now he's gonna learn that now. Um because he could have had a better differential. He doesn't because of unfortunateness with his decisions in who to bring in. When you can play it safe, it's always best to play it safe. Depending on who you want to get the kill, it doesn't necessarily matter, but I'm nitpicking, you know. Um, it's a useful win for the Wolverhampton Weevils, 2-0 to Jack. Fifth game, as we move on, and this was going to be one of the biggest games of the week, I think. Two um, juggernauts going at it. We've got Monotui and the Tampa Bay Luxrays taking on Skyrander and the Gothenburg Garchomps. Now, this was always going to be a big game. It was always going to be a close game. And it was the closest of close 1-0 victories for Monotui and the Tampa Bay Lux race. So, Mono um, is playing Trap the Sizzle with Magneton, game two. <laughs> and he's hoping that it's going to work this time, because last time around against uh, Sizz, it didn't quite work. So he's hoping to do it better this time. Um, offensive Scolipede, love it. When you see Scolipede, you often tend to think maybe Suicide Lead has a stack, probably Baton past the stats, but no, Mono's going offensive because of the matchup. And ooh, what's this we have? Trick Room Weakness Policy Diancy. Very nice. Big fan of that set. Looking at Sky's team, um, Assault Vest Rock Tomb Heracross is pretty cool. Um, not needing to run too much speed on there. Nice Swords Dance Drapion set, and I have to say I'm a big fan of Specs Frostlass. Frostlass can be quite underrated, I feel. And a spec set with the right move set can do a lot of damage. You know, its move set is fairly shallow, but I think Sky brought exactly what he needed this week. Looking into the battle, nothing too fancy going on early game, really. Um, you know, Diancy was getting some nice chip damage on some of Sky's mons. Uh, Sky showing that he can make the good plays, making a great double early on. He goes from Drapion into Mega Sceptile on the Ice Beaming Cresselia, predicting him to go into the Unmegged Blastoise. So, to sort of go over that a little bit more. Um, the matchup is Cresselia versus Drapion. Cresselia has gone for Ice Beam as Drapion switches in from Mega Sceptile. Next turn, um, Mono is going to go into his Unmegged Blastoise. Sky is going to predict the hell out of him and go into his Mega Sceptile, knowing that he runs the risk of the Ice Beam, but predicting that he's not going to go for it. So, really good play by Sky. Um, what we also saw from Sky here, we know he plays setup very well, we saw that last season, but he also knows when to back down. He has a plus two uh, sizz, uh, sizzle, but he knows when to get out of there. You know, it's very easy when you set up to think, oh, I can just set up more maybe, and I can maybe go for attacks, and I can take advantage of my boost. Sky's like, no, I know I can't touch this thing, don't take the risk, get out of there, fight another day. Now, uh, Mono had a plan to deal with sizzle. He had a plan to deal with it last time as well, and it didn't work, but he thought, okay, this time, this time I can do it. But Ockerberry ruins it completely, and now he's facing down a plus four sizzle, and Sky is looking good. Um, and Mono was sort of, oh no, this is bad. But um, he gets around it, and what we saw towards the end game is that Mono is a very good analyst. You know, um, as we get into the game, he looks at how Sky is playing, and he realizes the increasing potential for Shuckerberry Drapion. And he knows his win condition is very much his Scolipede, with Earthquake for the Drapion, but he also knows that Drapion can tank it with a Shooker. So he's thinking, okay, I need to bait in the Drapion to test this out. He does this, he's allowed to break the Shookerberry with Earthquake on the Gligar instead, and then he's able to go into offensive Scolipede, clean up the game, and get a few kills for it. So, a very good game, high quality stuff. Uh, Mono takes the win. And I'm sure he'll be very happy with that. So with that said and done, let's move on to the sixth game. We talked about Sizz just now in his last week game against Mono. Here he is with his second game, the All Somerset Sizzles versus Rizzy Pow and the Phoenix Sun Floras. So, after taking his big win last week, unfortunately Sizz is going to lose this one. A big, big victory for the Phoenix Sun Floras, a massive 5-0. Uh, now, Sizz's team, solid nickname game, punning around pal, we like it. Jolteon's set was interesting. Um, he brought Rain Dance, Hidden Power Water, and Thunder. I was a bit dubious about this. 
You know, he expected rain on his opponent's side, and he brought rain. Bold move. Very bold move. Now, I don't think his opponent did bring rain, but it was a bold move nonetheless. Um, choice Banner Zoomerill is ow. Agility Pass Mega Sizzle, love it. I've used that a fair amount myself in the format, and it's pretty cool. Um, decently predicted his opponent's team, but pay attention to the benches. Um, Kabutops was not eligible to battle in this game, and he did predict the Kabutops to come to the game. So, you know, that's an oversight that he's made early on. Um, but it's fine, he'll recognise that, and I'm sure he won't be making that mistake twice. Um, you know, Sizz is a quick learner, we know this. Now, Riz's team, Toxic Spikes, very good call versus Sizz. <clears throat> it puts a lot of pressure on his team. Now, Mixed Expert Belt Rachi, not bad. As we said, I like to look into what the Expert Belt is going to hit and what it's not going to hit. Now, um, the set with the Mixed Expert Belt Rachi was only not going to hit three of his opponent's mons super effectively, and one of those is Jolteon, who is paper thin. Uh, lots of mixed of offense here. Three mixed attackers. We've got Rachi, we've got Lucario, and we've got Snorlax. Yes, we do. We've got Fire Blast. We've got Fire Blast Snorlax. Well played indeed. Looking for that um, that big hit against the Mega Sizzle. Now, into the battle, much as we've seen in a few of the battles we've spoken about today. Uh, safe early plays. You know, um, it's early in the season. People aren't going to be making too many crazy predictions early game. Unless your name's uh, Skyrunder, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, safe early plays. Sizz does get a little bit risky with Licky Licky, I thought. Um, he left it in on a Nidoqueen Queen that could have had superpower. Um, but, you know, Licky will probably take two of those with the drops, able to get the wish off. So, not too much of a risk, but you're playing with fire a wee bit. And he was phasing around early with um, with Licky Licky's Dragon Tail, which was good, but he didn't have hazards up. So it was, you know, the chip damage he was getting was not as much as he probably would have liked. Um, speaking of things that he probably wouldn't have liked, Rachi KOing Scrafty, even at minus one, with the play rough out of nowhere, which was unfortunate. Down goes a bulky Scrafty, which could have been a bit of a problem. Um, Banded Azumarill in the rain is so very much out. Um, waterfall, Banded... Rain, Azumarill, huge, just just pain. All of the pain. And then Lucario murdered Sizz's team. Completely destroyed it. And this was the other mistake Sizz made. And I've been a victim of this myself, so I empathise with you completely, Sizz. This is why we check our speed tiers. Sizz was under the impression <clears throat> that Lucario was a lot slower than it is. I think he thought it was base 70. I think it taps out at base 90, 95, something like that. And this is why we check our speed tiers, because it really can come back to bite you in the ass. And it did for Sizz, but once again, this is a mistake he's made early in the season. Um, and, you know, he'll be double, triple checking his um, his speed tiers from now on, I'm very certain of that. But at the end of the day, it's a big win for the Phoenix Sun Flores, and it's a big win that they pretty much needed. So, you know, well played there to Riz. Moving on to the penultimate <clears throat> game of the week. This is going to see Xenon and the Sublime Salamence taking on Deneki and the St. Louis Sableyes. Now, this resulted in a nice, useful 2-0 win for Xenon. So let's take a look <coughs> at what kind of things they brought. I'm very sorry about the consistent coughing. Let me just do one big one. <coughs> sorry. Really got a pretty bad cough. Um, I'm glad Chaos isn't here because he would probably be ripping into me and be like, Die quiet, Shroom. What are you doing? We're trying to do the news. I'm sure that's what he'd say. Anyway. Xenon's team, solid speed creeping, as we would expect from someone of his calibre and his experience. Uh, we've got Scarfed Tornadus Therium with Tailwind, which is a nice option. Cool to see Ninetales making an appearance, not something you see drafted every day. Um, so it was nice to see it make its appearance. <coughs> Swords Dance Tentacruel. Now, it doesn't seem like the optimum thing, maybe. You know, it doesn't seem like the most usual thing. Um, it's, it's a gimmick that people have explored in the past. But um, you want to be careful when Xenon's doing this. He's done this before, albeit not with Tentacruel, he did it with Keldeo. If you may remember, if you were around to Season 1 of the Battle Union, you may remember Xenon bringing a really nice mixed Swords Dance Keldeo set, and he was using it to take out um, a Mega Fairy. It was Mega Altaria, he packed Swords Dance onto his, um, onto his Keldeo, bopped the Mega Altaria with a Poison Jab, then in comes the Physical Wall, and he goes for Hydro Pump. So, when Xenon's bringing Swords Dancing water types that don't normally run it, you want to start watching out. Now, Dan, uh, 
quick thing to say to you personally before we get into the team. I don't know if you can make the team builder screen a little bit bigger, but it would be cool if you could. Um, it was just a little bit small, you know, we had the entire showdown screen with just kind of the team builder bit in the top left hand corner. So on a personal look down, if you can make that team builder bigger, I'm not sure if you're, if you're able to with the setup you've got going. If you can, that will be absolutely grand. Thank you very much. But, onto the team that he decided to bring. The Lord Almighty Surf Mega Ordino is here. Yes, yes it is. Big fan of that. Love seeing Surf Mega Ordino. Uh, Specs Excel Gore. Frito. <laughs> yep, Specs Excel Gore makes a resurgence to the Battle Union and Choice Band Greninja. Beautiful. Absolutely love it. You don't see Choice Band Greninja every day, and I'm a big fan of the fact that he brought it. Now, looking into the battle, uh, Xenon Saxe's Metagross turn 2. And this got me worried. Because on his opponent's side is a Mega Ordino, and I know from experience, both using it and facing it, that thing can be tough to take down. So I was worried for Xenon early game. I was thinking, okay, Metagross has gone down. Sure, he needs to sack something at this point, even early on, but now Mega Ordino becomes a problem. Maybe Tentacle. Oh, and then Tentacle goes. Because Tentacle is used to switch into the Embol. The Embol Earthquakes on the switch, never mind dot JPEG. Um. And then a bit later, Xenon is the next one to lose a Pokemon again. So he goes 6-3 down, and it is looking super bad. And you're thinking, how? How can Xenon pull this back? However, Diancy is able to remove Mega Ordino. And I have to say, by the way, Xenon, excellent editing on your part in that part of the video. Absolutely loved it. I know how you feel about Mega Ordino. <laughs> so that was really good. If you want to see some super editing with an evil Mega Ordino, check out Xenon's video, because it's top-notch. Then Thunderous goes down to its Life Orb Recall. It's at the point where Life Orb Recall takes out Thunderous, and suddenly there's a new threat going, and its name is Tornadus Therion. So Tornadus is in. Uh, Salamence is also in. Now, Torn's attacks at this point, uh, you've got Air Slash, you've got, I think he had U-Turn and Heat Wave. So he's certainly not able to KO Ments from full. Now, Dan knows this, and he's going to set up a Dragon Dance. But at this point, Tornadus reveals that it is Scarfed. So even at plus one, Mence is not outspeeding the Tornadus. Tornadus can't two-hit KO with the Air Slash. But he gets the flinch. The crowd goes wild. Xenon is able to take down the rest of his opponent's team. Because surely, there is nothing Greninja can do. And suddenly, Greninja freezes Tornadus with the Ice Punch. And then Tornadus... Thor's turn one, what is going on? I don't even know. Xenon hits all his air slashes, and coming from nowhere, from 6-3 down, he's able to take the 2-0 victory. This was a huge, huge thing. Massive back and forth. Xenon, he does get a bit lucky. You know, he gets an absolutely crucial flinch onto a Salamence that was at plus one at the time. He gets the first turn Thor against the Greninja. You know, Dan's done everything he can at this point, you know, he's got very early, very good lead. But unfortunately, sometimes the RNG just comes into play in a bigger way than you can expect. And, you know, this was very much an example of that. So, with that, we can move on to the final game, the final game <clears throat> of the week. And that saw Eric and the Bristol Beedus taking on Bub and Munchlaxter United. And this game ended in Eric's second 5-0 in two weeks. He is looking, once again, to be on very good form. Looking at the team, what have we got? Modest Chandelure is ouch. It was scarfed, I believe, um, to hit as hard as possible whilst remaining as fast as possible. A well-built Amoongus. Um, you know, he's got the Papaya Berry, the Piapa Berry, I'm sorry, um, which means what he's able to do with this Amoongus is... Um, Take a plus two Zen headbutt from Mega Gallade, predicting a Swords Dance set, and can then Oko it back with Foul Play. <clears throat> Just one of the examples of Eric being very good at team building, and I'm coughing again. One sec. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm very sorry about this. Um, but yeah, you know, Eric building a very solid team with some power and some threats and some good bulk in the sense of that well built Amoongus. Looking at Bub's team, um, his Skarmory completely 100% deals with Amoongus. He's packing the safety goals. Always nice to have that solid switch into a spore. Uh, Carmine Uxie, yes, love it. One of my favourite things in the world. <clears throat> um, looking at the Mega Gallade, uh, he was running Zen Headbutt. He wasn't actually running Sword Stance, but he was running four attacks with Zen Headbutt. Fire Punch was not one of those attacks, and I was thinking at the time it might have been better than Zen Headbutt. You know, it's 
Admittedly, it doesn't hit the Amoongus as hard, but it's still hitting it fairly hard. And without it, he's pretty much walled by Fortress. Now, whilst Fortress can't necessarily do too much back to a Mega Gallade, it can set up hazards on it and then put pressure onto Bub's team. Some really interesting speed creeping going on here. <coughs> um, Eric had made sure that his Fortress speed crept Dragalgi, and then Bub comes back and counter speed creeps the Fortress, which was excellent. You know, it shows how speed creeping and counter speed creeping can really come into a game. Looking at said game, um, Eric was scouting items and sets very well early on. We did see this Fortress Dragalgi uh, matchup, and I'm going to try and make sense of this. I've written down, Eric has sped crept the speed creep of his own speed creep. I mentioned that, um, uh, you know, Dragalgi had counter sped crept a fortress, but Eric has taken that into account and has sped crept the speed creep, which is the sign of an excellent player, I think. Um, Dragalgi goes down early. This is important because suddenly a pretty much decently hard counter to Chandelure is gone. Uh, papaya, pa Piapa, Papaya, Piapa, it's one of those two. The Psychic Weakening Berry. Um, the Psychic Weakening Berry, Foul Play, Combination, Amoongus works pretty well. You know, he's not a plus two with Mega Gallade, so it doesn't Oko with the, um, with the Foul Play, but it still works pretty well. Um, and this game was pretty much Skarm versus Amoongus, featuring double switches. And it's really well received and quite hyped up sequel, Reuniclus versus Whimsicott, featuring double switches. Um, there was a lot of that going on, those matchups really played a major role in the game. Eric playing very smart with Altaria versus Whimsicott. He's behind a sub, he's not set up, he knows that Whimsicott gets Infiltrator, he's not going to take the risk. Not at all, not doing that. Uh, Mega Altaria can be a very nice win condition. Um, Scarf allows the KO on Mega Gallade for Chandelure, which, um, you know, I think at the time, <clears throat> Bub was not expecting the Scarf, and he still didn't see it, that it was Scarfed. So he brings in Mega Gallade onto a um, on, onto the Scarf Chandelure. Eric was expecting the Shadow Sneak, but he knows he can take it. Uh, but in fact, it was just a case of Bub not realising it was Scarfed Shandy. And Chandelure is able to pick up four KOs in the game. Uh, but then Tailwind Whimsicott does threaten him out. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, he has his checks and counters saved. Uh, Tailwind Whimsicott, as I say, it does threaten. It threatens out the uh, Scarf Chandelure because it could possibly take it out at the range of health it was at. But, you know, Eric has saved his checks, he saved his counters, and he's able to let Reuniclus clean up late game and get the final two KOs. So, a nice 5-0 victory for Bristol Bidus. <coughs> Eric looking to be on pretty good form. So, with that, we come to the end of the games. Uh, because it's just me, this is a little bit of a shorter video, I'm aware of that. So, let's get on to the power rankings. Now, I've been unable to, um, to deliberate with Chaos in the Sky over these power rankings. But, I think I've got a pretty good list. So, let's go over the list as it stands. So, sitting in at number 16, we do have Jedi. He has slipped down after that 2-0 loss. Uh, so, Jedi is in at 16. Uh, just hopping up above him, we've got Just Weevil sitting at 15th after the 2-0 win. So, a nice start for him. Uh, Dan. Dan moves down to 14th. Um, Daneki with... Now, what was his team? I've forgotten. The St. Louis Stabilize. They moved down to 14th after their unfortunate loss. And Sizz and the Orsomerset Sizzles, he's back down to 13th where I believe he started um, when we did our first power rankings. After a pretty nasty 5-0 loss on his part. But, you know, he's moved up and then he's moved straight back down to where he was. So, not too much ground lost, I don't think. Um, and then in at, I think, 12, we have, yeah, 16, 15, 14, yeah, 12. I was messing around my own numbers there. In at 12, we do have Bub. Bub and Munchlax United after their 5-0 loss as well. They're down in 12th. Um, but speaking of 5-0s, of course, someone has to win those games. And sitting in... At number 11, we are going to have Riz. Riz and the Phoenix Sun Floras, they rise up to 11 after their 5-0 win. Speaking of wins, a few coming our way. We've got Xenon in at 10 and the Sublime Salamence after their 2-0. And Quill, his 2-0 was very nice. It moves him up to 9th um, over Sly, who is another very good player. So well done to Quill. In at 8, it's a bit of a fall from Grace for Jim. He's down in 8th after his 2-0 loss. 
Um, now I've moved him down quite far because we had a few people that we wanted to move up and others moving down with him. So whilst he's in 8th, we do have Baby Eye in at 7th after his 4-0 loss. Uh, and Mono. Mono moves up to 6th uh, with his win. Big 2-0 win for him. Um, sorry, 1-0 win for him in a tough game. I didn't want to move him up as much. Uh, because there were others who I didn't want to move too far down in the top five. So, Mono, that's why you're where you are. But as you know, my friend, keep winning those games. You're going to be rocketing up the charts. So, sitting in at five, we are going to have Slyro and the Pittsburgh Pyroars. Or Pittsburgh Pyroar. Sly, do tell me, is it Pyroars or Pyroar? I've never properly understood whether it's Pyroars or Pyroar. I think it's Pittsburgh Pyroar. Anyway, Sly in at five with the 2-0 loss for him. Um, he has a lot of 2-0s and 5-0s this week, which was strange. Um, and then Eric continues to move up the charts. He's come in at fourth right about now, so a big leap for him. Coming in at fourth after his second 5-0 win in a row. Alex Wanzi Baynet, um, he moves up to third AS Monferno, sitting at third after a useful 4-0 victory for him. Skyrander is going to be second uh, with the Gothenburg Garchomps. A close 1-0 loss sees him slip down just one position. Which means, sitting at the top of the table where he's used to being, I have to add, it's going to be Trip and the Dallas Staravias, last season's champion, looking to maintain his hold on that championship with his big 2-0 victory of his own. So, those are admittedly my rankings. As I say, I haven't been able to contact Chaos to um kind of deliberate with him over where he thinks po uh, people should be, but I think he would agree in most with this list. Do you agree with this list? If you do... Let me know, let us know in the comment section down below, and if you don't, let us know that as well. We're always interested to hear where you would rank our coaches and our managers, you know. Um, so if you have a list that's different to the one that's on the screen right now, let us know down in the comment section below. Let us know where you think our coaches should be ranked and why. Always interested to hear your guys' views. But that is pretty much going to wrap things up from this video. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed um, next week, hopefully, we'll be back on schedule, and hopefully, Chaos will be back with us, which is always nice. In the meantime, do make sure to check out the other analytical videos going up on the Battle Union channel. Um, and, of course, what you can also find this year are comprehensive playlists week by week of both the team building videos and separate playlists for the battle. So, shout out to whoever's organizing them. I assume it's Frito. It might be Gabe. Whichever of you, maybe both. Thank you very much for doing that. It makes my job a lot easier and it helps out the viewers at home. So make sure you check out the week three videos. They'll be rolling in pretty much around now, I would think. So uh, yeah, they'll be going up as and when. Make sure you check them out. Links to our coaches will be down in the description below. Check out all their channels and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, that's, as I say, is going to wrap things up. I've rambled on for uh, not as long as I would if Chaos was here. Of course. <laughs> but uh, as I say, he should hopefully be back with us next week. But until then, I uh, hope you have a great weekend. It's coming up to that time. And uh, yeah, as I say, look out for the battles going up very soon for week three. Uh, so that is, as I say, going to wrap things up. My final thank you to you all for watching. And with that, I will see you next time. So take care, TBU fans. Goodbye. <laughs>